Welcome back to another episode of Finding Your Hidden Superpower, Autism, Asperger's, and those of us who are neurodiverse. Today, I'm going to be talking about unlocking your potential, figuring out how to work on mastering your motor skills and physical activities. As being an autistic person, I know for a fact that the way that I learned how to become more coordinated uh, work with my muscles a lot better was I had to look at, I had to internalize what I was doing with my body. I had to focus in on how I move my muscles, how I move my joints, how I move my body, and the space in which um, I'm in at all times. I have to figure out uh, internally how I can relate to that. Because if I don't, if I'm only looking for the external results of how I'm moving, that doesn't work for me. As uh, I found out that it doesn't work for a lot of people that are suffering from autism, which I'm an undiagnosed autistic, but I've taken the APSPY test and I scored very high on the APSPY test. So I'm a highly functional autistic person. I've had to learn the hard way and I'm old, so I've gotten better as the years have gone by and I've learned better on how to do things. So I want to get down to it. So hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we got a special treat for you, an amazing guide to, to overcoming motor skills uh, and physical activity challenges for people with autism. Uh, just a few adjustments and we'll be able to make these massive strides in your everyday life. Are you ready to take your motor skills and physical activities to the next level? So let's dive in. Your primary focus today is on finding solutions that are both practical and achievable for autistic individuals. I've broken it down into bite-sized chunks of tasks, tasks, so so to make a, the process smooth and enjoyable and most importantly, effective. So let's jump into the first area. So motor skills. For some autistic individuals, developing motor skills can be challenging. Uh, but the good news is studies have shown that using an internal focus of attention can make a significant difference. So what does that mean? It means concentrating on your body movements while performing a task, which enhances the accuracy and control of your movements. Now let's talk about physical activities. Engaging in various activities can, can help you overcome challenges and improve your, skin, your skills. Consider trying out physical education interventions. These are tailored programs that are designed to improve uh, participation and engagement. Uh, aqua aquatic activities, so go into the swimming pool. Don't get thrown into the deep end like I did because I ended up having a lot of trauma because a uh, YMCA instructor didn't uh, know how to teach me. So he decided that he was going to throw me into the d deep end. So I started drowning, and then I didn't like that instructor. So that lesson didn't help me. But if you go in... Now they have all these noodles. You can uh, join the YMCA. You can join a local uh, place that has a, a swim swimming pool, and you can learn how to swim. Um, you know, most people are buoyant. I'm not one of those people. I've always had problems. Uh, I sink better than I float, and uh, so. But if you put on flotation devices, just don't be afraid to. Uh, somebody look at you strange you just have to have courage and you have to realize that this is something that you have to do you got to figure out a quiet time when people aren't going uh crazy in the in the swimming pool you want to have your own area and you might need to find a special pool in order to do this but when you are doing this, like I've done it, I've been able to conquer swimming. I've been able to figure these things out. Um, 
and I've been able to do it the hard way, unfortunately. I didn't like doing it the hard way, but it was either that or never conquer my fears. And I, I had to conquer those fears because if I didn't conquer those fears, I would never become the person who I am today that's talking to you uh, through YouTube. And I may still have, I still have a lot of issues that I'm working through, but we're all human. Uh, you know, the bottom line is uh, you have to be, you got to be fearless. And uh, anybody making fun of you, they probably have, um, they're probably uh, not able to realize what they are having to overcome as well. Um, so swimming, for instance, uh, can be calming. And it can be an excellent way to build coordination, coordination and strength. And um, so motor skills training. Targeted training sessions can help with building confidence and ability. Uh, try horseback riding. Uh, equine therapy is a type of therapy where you get to learn all about horses. Horses uh, love humans. Most humans love horses. It's it's almost as, uh, as natural as uh, dogs and, and humans. Uh, so it's fun, it's engaging, and it can improve your posture, balance, and coordination. So, um, but wait, there's more. Remember that small incremental steps are the key to success. So don't be overwhelmed. We, can, we will call this approach, it's a Japanese phrase, it's a term called Kaizen, if anybody's heard of Six, six Sigma. Um, Kaizen is a Japanese philosophy that's been around since, I think, the 1400s. And basically what it is, is whatever you have going on in your life and whatever you need to accomplish, you need to break that down into uh, smaller goals, smaller steps baby steps, just like I talk about the What About Bob movie that I love and hold dear. Um, even though it was a comedy and there was a lot of craziness in there, uh, the overall uh, process in which Bob learned how to do um, baby steps, how to do little, little things and break down all those big things that he was, he had lots of fears and irrational fears and he broke those down and he was able to overcome those so you may have rational fears and but in order to get over them you're going to have to break those down into tiny little steps and it doesn't matter how many steps there are but the key is, is that you don't want to um trigger your limbic system. If you don't know what that is, that's a part of your brain that's very deep in your spine, uh, where your spine meets your brain. And what it does is it controls fight, flight, and a freeze. And when you get into this fear mode, it can overtake you. And if you end up freezing and don't do what you want to do and you're just missing the boat um, because you go into freeze mode or if you start arguing with people and uh, start fighting them because you don't want the change that's happening to you to happen. Um, you only can fight it for so long and you're going to have to uh, deal with it or it will deal with you. Don't allow yourself to get run over by life. And um, so you get fight, you get flight. So the flight, running away. Um, lots of people run away. Uh, one of the things that we talk about in uh, counseling is that the first thing people have to learn how to do is just to walk away instead of getting into trouble. So walking away is sometimes the best thing. Freezing is sometimes the best thing, and um, fighting, sometimes arguing, arguing your point is sometimes the best way, but there's a point to where it, that way does not work anymore, and you become overwhelmed, and you have to deal with what's going on in a rational way. So what you want to do with this Kaizen is that you want to break down this, the tasks, the steps, down into where you can rationally 
take a bite out of each one and get to the next one and then get your final goal done. And, um, you know, so look at them, take bite-sized chunks. You know, you don't want to swallow everything or else all of a sudden you choke. So that's why we have teeth. So you chew it up. That's why we have digestive enzymes. That's why we have acid in our stomach. The acid breaks apart the food so the um, digestive enzymes can start breaking it apart and using it. So you can do that yourself uh, about what you need to do in life. So you want to chew it up. You want to allow you to swallow it. And you want to figure out how to absorb it. And then you absorb it. And then it helps you. And so to wrap this up, um, the bottom line is that there's lots of things you can do to improve your motor skills. In which um, yeah, exercise, something as simple as walking. Even if you uh, have problems walking, you can uh, use a cane. You can use hiking sticks. What I do, because I experience a lot of pain from a lot of injuries for being old, um, is when I went out, I went to the local thrift store and I found some uh, ski poles. And these things are the best because uh, they're light, they're flexible, and they only cost me $5 for a pair. And uh, if you want, you can go to your local REI and spend $100 for the same thing that I spent $5 for at the thrift store. So you don't need to spend a lot of money. Get, get yourself uh, some nice fitting shoes. Get yourself fitted by a professional sh shoe person. Um, you don't have to buy it there, but at least they'll show you what the uh, proper fitting shoe is supposed to be because a lot of the times you go into just a shoe store and there's nobody to help you and so you need to understand these things if you don't have the right apparatus for your feet if you don't have the right shoes you don't have the proper shoes for what you're going to do um, you're going to have messed up feet messed up knees messed up hips a messed up back and then you're only going to end up worse for wear. So take it simple and make it happen and then you'll be good. So I'm going to end with that. So um, this has been some basic stuff. But um, definitely if you focus in on how your body responds to movement. So getting back to that. So... The primary focus needs to be internal about how you're looking at how your relationship to the environment, not necessarily the environment's relationship to you, because uh, we need to focus in on how we move and and then we can go from there to getting to the outcome that we want. But we need to first focus on how our body is moving and if it's moving efficiently because if your knees hurt um, then you might not be taking the proper stance if your hips hurt you may be going too narrow or too wide if if your back hurts you're probably putting you're not using your legs enough and you're putting too much of your lower back into it if you're um also, if your back hurts, you may need to shore up your ab strength. And you can easily do that by just doing what's called plank. It's very simple. Oh, yeah, you don't need any machines. You just need to be able to not even do a push up. You just get into the prone position before you do a push up and you just hold it. And you keep on holding it and you keep on holding it until you can't hold it anymore. And then you will have to put your put your stomach back down on the floor and then you do another one and then you do another one and then you do it and you don't overtrain you be careful about how you train and you just do enough that uh, you feel a little bit sore the next day but only while you're getting up and then a half hour later then you feel good and um so then at the most, you want to be sore 
for the most two days. You don't want to push it. Sometimes people get a personal trainer and then they're pushing it really hard and their personal trainer digs them into the ground and then they can't even get back to the gym for another week. And the personal trainer doesn't know what they're doing, but they look good and then you're listening to them and then they're beating the hell out of you. You don't want to beat the hell out of yourself. I did that enough for so many years and uh, it didn't it didn't help me in the long run. And so take it from me, a person that I uh, used to be extremely athletic and um, but I got to the point where I was pushing myself too hard and I broke down my body. So now at age 57, it's hard just to uh, walk a couple miles uh, without assistance from uh, the the canes or some sort of apparatus that I got to put on my body in order for my body not to fall apart. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. And if it's not, Oh, oh, well, sorry. Uh, give me some guidance on what you want to hear next time. So have a great day. Have a great night. Sayonara.